This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we're the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Before we get going this week, a couple of quick editorial notes. As I'm sure you've noticed, I am not Nikki. She is taking a well-earned break this week and will be back next week as usual. But due to the 4th of July holiday week and the fact that I have to film a day earlier than Nikki, we gathered stories a little sooner than usual. So any later breaking stories will be in next week's Roundup show. Right, on with the show. This week we are starting with Q2 sales figures which have been released by many manufacturers and it's been a good quarter for EV sales all round. Let's start with Tesla, which delivered 466,140 vehicles and produced 479,700 vehicles. That means it produced an impressive 888,000 vehicles in the first half of 2023 and is on track to meet its goal of 1.8 million vehicles produced this year. BYD sold 700,244 quote new energy vehicles. Of those vehicles, 352,163 were battery electric. That puts BYD's quote electrified sales at 1,255,637 with roughly 600,000 of those being battery electric for the first half of this year. GM sold 15,652 EVs in the second quarter of 2023. The Bolt EV and Bolt EUV made up 13,959 of those. In contrast, the Hummer sold 47 examples in Q2, a marked increase on the two units sold in Q1. The Cadillac Lyric sold 1,348 units in Q2, an increase on the 968 sold in Q1. GM blamed battery production for the numbers. NIO delivered 23,520 vehicles in Q2. While it points out that it delivered 10,707 vehicles in June 2023, a 74% month-on-month growth rate, its overall figures for Q2 are pretty similar to Q2 in 2022. Rivian exceeded expectations, producing 13,992 EVs through Q2 at its normal Illinois facility, up 45% on Q1. Through Q2, it delivered 12,640 vehicles and it expects to hit its target of 50,000 vehicles this year. Sales of Kia's electrified models increased by 40% over the first half of 2022, markedly exceeding overall sales growth, which was 17% year on year. However, sales of Kia's EV6 fell from 12,568 in year-to-date 2022 to just 8,328 year-to-date this year. Kia doesn't break out sales of the Nero EV and PHEV from the Nero family, but it's likely that a significant proportion of quote electrified sales are mild and plug-in hybrids from the brand. Nissan reported sales of 2,335 Arias and 1,880 Leafs during Q2 of 2023. That brings its total of electric sales for the year to 9,429 vehicles. Hyundai showed an increase in sales across the board with 14% higher sales overall. Hyundai reports that electrified or quote green car sales increased by 53% and now make up 20% of its overall sales. While the Ionic 5 increased sales by 10%, it's the Kona EV which really surprised with 239% increase in sales, hinting at strong demand for smaller, more affordable vehicles. Finally, Nikola reported retail sales of 66 trucks this quarter with wholesale figures up to 45 units. Automakers love reusing vehicle names because they can help engender brand loyalty among people who have a soft spot for some classic cars from the brand. 
and it's a technique commonly used to introduce fans to new EVs, which is exactly what Fiat did this week when it pulled the 600 Monkey out of its 54-year retirement to become the latest all-electric model from the brand. Basically a Fiat rebadging of the European market Jeep Avenger, the Fiat 600e is set to replace the Fiat 500X in Europe as Fiat's compact crossover. It features a 113kW front-wheel drivetrain paired with a 54kWh battery pack, and 100kW DC quick charging to give it a WLTP range of 249 miles, 400 or so kilometers per charge. We're continuing to see Chinese automakers making their way into the European and Asian markets. This week, Zika announced its opening pre-orders for the Zika X compact SUV and Zika 001 shooting brake in Sweden and in the Netherlands. With the Zika X starting at approximately 45,000 euro, around $49,000 inclusive of VAT, and the Zika 001 starting at just shy of $60,000, Zika is unabashedly aiming to enter the crowded mid-range luxury market and plans to offer its own financing, assistance with charging station installation, and an up to 200,000 km warranty along with pan-European charging agreements. With both vehicles capable of charging to 80% in roughly 30 minutes at a compatible CCS charger, it will be interesting to see how this new entrant to the market does across Europe and across other Asian markets. With worsening impacts from climate change visible this year, sea temperatures wildly abnormal, massive wildfires across Canada, and heat domes across many parts of the world, it's good news that a study has revealed that China's solar panel installations are growing at a pace that could increase global capacity by 85% in less than two years. While coal generation still dominates China's energy mix, solar and wind capacity are now climbing dramatically, and if this continues, China will surpass its 2030 goal of 1.2 gigawatts of solar and wind energy, five years early. In the USA, we've also seen a new study that indicates that the Inflation Reduction Act may, economy-wide, lead to a 43-48% to 48 reduction in CO2 emissions by 2030. Unfortunately, we're still not even at the point of the US reaching the target set in the Paris Climate Agreement, which is probably why this past Friday the White House very quietly endorsed plans to research geoengineering for climate change mitigation. Let's hope we don't end up at that point. The US auto industry's largest lobbying organization has come out against the proposed pollution rules laid out by the EPA. The group, the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, whose members include General Motors, Ford, Stellantis, Volkswagen, and Toyota, states that it believes that the new rules cannot, quote, be met without substantially increasing the cost of vehicles, reducing consumer choice, and disadvantaging major portions of the United States population and territory. The group proposes a target of 40 to 50% electric sales by 2030, putting them at odds both with claims from their own manufacturers, who've stated that they can hit zero emission targets by 2035, and with scientists at the IEA, which states that nations need to phase out fossil fuel vehicle sales entirely by 2035. A few weeks back, we reported that Volvo had proudly announced that the XC30 had the smallest carbon impact of any vehicle it has produced, quote, below 30 tons CO2 equivalent. This week, Fisker announced that its life cycle analysis of the Ocean Sport EU revealed that it has the lowest carbon footprint of any vehicle in the segment. The 35-page document examines the resource used throughout the vehicle's life cycle, including reuse of various components at the end of life, which is deemed to be 200,000 kilometers, around 125,000 miles. In that time, the total life cycle produces 29 0.5 tons of CO2 equivalent. Impressive. Having won current drivers EV of the year last year with the Ionic 5, Hyundai may have hoped to win it again this year. And they did, but this year it was with the Ionic 6 which took the coveted award. 
stating that it won because it's a car the car and driver team quote love to drive and citing the 800 volt architecture's impact on charging times the editor-in-chief of car and driver said that quote the ionic 6 lineup has available power and range that puts tesla on notice now that's fighting talk each year bank of america publishes its market outlook for the automotive industry this year's quote car wars study suggests that in the ev marketplace tesla is likely to remain top of the charts although it expects gm and ford to take growing pieces of the larger ev market unsurprisingly the report states that the compact suv segment is going to become more saturated as more and more automakers update their model ranges and drop models outside that popular segment and that this agglomeration may lead to market instability, as could next year's presidential election in the United States. Before we go to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are and you're in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging installed at home. Follow the link below and start your journey today. It's no secret that we at the channel love ourselves a good camper van, but EV campers are not yet super common, so we were excited this week to see the results of Škoda's Vocational Student Academy. Based on a Škoda Enyaq, the multifunctional space of the vehicle christened the Rodiac can serve as a living environment or office, with the interior shifting from a modern mobile office complete with a 27-inch monitor, high-speed internet, docking station and, most importantly, an espresso machine, to a living area complete with a bed and a small kitchen. It's the first time the vocational school students have worked on the battery electric ENIAC, and I think they did a pretty nifty job. What say you? And finally, as anyone who's driven a left-hand drive car in a right-hand drive country, or vice versa, knows, while driving itself is generally fine, there are some moments in life that are just a bit tricky. Pulling into parking lots or popping through drive throughs can lead to some rather shall we say ungainly contortions to reach ticket machines or to hand over payment cards. But following the end of production of the right-hand drive Model S and X, Tesla UK have found the solution. It turns out that a new product, the Reacher, is being included with opposite hand drive vehicles sold in the UK. It's definitely an answer to the challenges. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure that you've hit that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It's super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will help keep the nation beautiful. Next week, Nikki will be back in the studio, so you'll be able to get your usual studio roundup from her. But I will not be back for a while, so ta for now. In the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge on this channel. There's some great stuff that's just been released, and Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Kate Monton Elliott. Kakite. See you next time.